in this room, of this beautiful people, one out of five of us, feel like we do not have anybody to confide in. Of all these people who have amazing, amazing social skills, and I've been on the receiving end of some good ones, 50% of us aren't so sure we're getting enough meaningful interactions on a daily basis. And for all the fact that we are building our businesses built on the shoulders of relationships, I'm in a room of people who know the value of relationships, and yet 70% of us, when asked, do you wish your friendships felt more supportive, would say yes. Loneliness. Loneliness is the hunger for something a little bit more. Hunger says, I have room in my heart for a little more love. Loneliness means, I wish I felt a little more seen. Loneliness says, I want to feel supported. How many of you have ever felt lonely at one point in your life? Good, all of you. The others were liars. We're back with our friendship expert, Shasta Nelson, and two best friends looking to reconnect. That any relationship has to have five positive feelings for every negative feeling. And so we have a whole bunch of angst and stress and hurt and pain. Everything we want to do now is trying to figure out how to bring joy. And I would like, I think it'd be so fabulous if each of you would brainstorm for a second and like, ask, what do you need that would help you feel loved? The truth of the matter is, we have to start changing the systems. We have to start changing the structures. And one of the most important systems and structures that we can start to change is in the workplace. Because the workplace is where we spend the bulk of our time. They took 148 longitudinal studies and they have found and concluded that if you feel lonely and don't do something about it, it is the equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. We are hungry for more connection. So are your clients. So are your clients. They come in, we come in, and we think we need all these things to make us happy. We say, I need this, and I want this, and I have this future, and I want to buy this, and I want to afford this. And you know better than most people at the end of the day they want all of those things because they want it to make a difference for the people in their lives, because they want to share it with somebody, because they want to create a legacy, because they want to experience things with people. You can add up all the research, all that's been done on happiness, and you can compile all of that together, and everything we think we need to be happy takes up less than 30% of our happiness. 70% is actually quite simple. We think of happiness as hard to identify. We actually know that 70% of our happiness comes down to four things. The number of relationships we have, the closeness of the friendships we have, the closeness with our family, and our relationships with our neighbors and coworkers. 70% of our happiness comes down to those relationships. Sixty percent of our employees feel lonely at least half the time they're in our offices, in our care, under our protection. And that's tragic because for 20 years we have had Gallup telling us that how an employee answers the questions, do you have a best friend, do you feel like you belong, that is the most telling important factor as to their engagement, their retention. If they have a best friend at work, they are your best employees. They will call in sick less. They will uh, have better customer service. They will feel safer brainstorming, engaging, and speaking up. Remember the definition of all healthy friendships are any relationship between any two people where we both feel seen in a safe and satisfying way. This is where the safety happens because it's only as we have consistent time together that we can start predicting how you're going to behave. And that's what creates safety. And this is why work is one of the most impactful places that we can be talking about this. Because work is the closest thing we have to when friendships felt automatic when we were kids, because school was consistent. And we make friends with people at work 
because of this consistency. Vulnerability is our sharing, it's our revealing, it's our letting ourselves be seen by another person. We're not going to be made fun of for giving out an oddball idea. We're not going to be uh, ostracized for having taken a risk and trying something big. And so we have a lot of workplaces maybe that have happy hours and we have a good time, and we have Christmas parties and Hanukkah parties and we see each other every day, but for lack of this, you're gonna lose your people. The workplace is where we have to solve this. And so my ask to you today is going to be, I want you to be somebody who chooses to say, I will make sure that I pursue connection in my own life and I will be somebody who's willing to be contagious in my workplace. And if you practice positivity, consistency, and vulnerability, I can guarantee you that you can bond with anybody. So be careful, those are magic powers. <laughs> be careful who you bond with. I guarantee you I could put two strangers together and bond them, even if they have nothing in common. I guarantee it, we've done enough studies on this now. And the reverse is true. You have never made a friend without practicing these three things. These three things, you're not having to stab in the dark and be like, I hope we bond. You know what bonds you. Most of us don't believe the research. Most of us read that stuff and we're like, yeah, okay. But I don't know if I really want to foster friendships at work. And yet your employees are dying for it. We're dying from it. Our clients need it. Our employees are craving it. We live in a world where we all want to be seen in a safe and supportive way, don't we?